Look at his cheeky smirk, he's so happy. Wait until I tell him about the average lifespan in the Middle Ages. And not so happy anymore. Hello lords and ladies, I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to have a look at the might of the Plandian military, that will include their main troop line, their noble troop line, their militia units who are tasked with defense of villages, castles and cities, and lastly their caravan guard unit that protects their trade. Unlike the Batania video, I'm not going to talk about the two minor factions, namely the Company of the Golden Boar and the Brotherhood of the Woods, because I'm going to dedicate another video to all the minor factions. Before I begin though, I thought I'd ask. If you guys are enjoying the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing and let me know which faction you'd like to see a video on next in the comment section down below. Moving on, let's talk about the pros and cons of the Vlandian military. Just like the Azerite, their main 3 line units only get access to shields starting from tier 3, unlike the rest of Calradian armies making it that bit harder to keep your tier 2 soldiers alive. However, unlike many armies, most of their infantrymen come equipped with spears or other types of polearms or two-handed weapons, giving them that army-wide extra reach against both cavalry and infantry, starting from their recruits all the way to their sergeants, making any man on a horse think twice before charging into Vlandian lines. Vlandians, just like any other medieval feudal state, loves to deploy mass shock cavalry formations ready to break the enemy lines, paving the way for their infantry, which is reflected with good options for these units in both their main and noble troop trees. Even though they show love for throwing people onto horses, they don't field any ranged cavalry, neither in form of skirmishing cav, which is something I'm not too fond of myself to be honest, or archer cav. Dedicated crossbowmen branch capable of delivering deadly high damage volleys but at a slower rate than archers and shorter range, leaving them prone to suppressive archer fire when numbers are even. Lack of skirmishing infantry takes away that small damage boost just before melee engagement that can soften up an enemy frontline given their shields aren't raised or an infantry that can have a go at enemy cavalry up close rushing right at you. Shock troops capable of destroying enemy shields in the form of Billmen and Vulgiers, however like all other shock troops they don't wield shields making them prone to ranged fire. Now that we know the general strengths and weaknesses of this army let's have an in-depth look at their units, starting with the recruit. Even though like other recruits I highly recommend these men for the role of meat shields and looter killing machines, these men come equipped with spears rather than one handed weapons, letting them poke looters without getting hit in the melee. Who knows, maybe with plenty of luck on their side they might even take a horseman off his saddle. Footman is one of those tier 2 units that come without a shield, making them susceptible to range damage compared to their neighbors tier 2 units since they only wear light armor. However now they come equipped with one of two spears and a sword for close quarter combat. Vlandian Spearmen are the first unit in the roster to come equipped with a shield, and not some cheap wooden door they ripped off a peasant's house, but a massive 500 hit point shield. Coming with medium armor, a good spear and sword makes them a deadly tier 3 unit on the battlefield. Billman, as the name suggests, isn't someone who's going to come to your house to make you pay your bills, and if he did, you'd probably wouldn't want to be there. As a man armed with a funny name two handed axe capable of tearing shields and doors apart into splinters probably would split your head open too, for the cost of free. Even though his skill rating drops below average for tier 4 due to his poorer two handed skill, his armor rating goes up quite a bit to make up for the lack of shield. Vulgier, a man with an awkward French like name and even other weapons. Armed with a two-handed sword and a vulge, which may look like a polearm, however it classifies as a two-handed weapon, which can be wielded in one hand, which isn't really worth it as he doesn't come with a shield, however he is the only infantry unit to come with shown weapons, namely the Francescas. Still comes with a bit lower skill rating for his tier, however he makes up for it with his heavy armor. However, if shock troops aren't your thing, you can opt in for pikemen instead, wielding a massive pole designed for tickling horses. Still lacking a shield and with a bit lower armor rating compared to the Vulgier, this man knows how to tackle a horse. Vlandian Infantry is a very similar unit to the Spearman, with almost exact same skill ratings, armor ratings and equipment, except Infantry has a chance of 1 in 3 to spawn with an axe instead of a sword for that bonus damage against shields. This man is a veteran that fought in many battles either with neighboring states or squabbling lords. Even though he's a frontline swordman, he also comes with a spear giving him an edge over cavalry if they ever decide to charge. He comes with better armor but for some odd reason with slightly worse shield. Not by much, but still worse. Sergeants are a powerful heavy infantry unit capable as a frontline unit and anti-cavalry soldier, with a great shield and even better set of weapons. 
They may be a bit slower compared to other infantry due to heavy armor and athletic skill, but once they hit, they hit hard. Light Cavalry are a great introduction into Vlandia's Shock Cavalry. Maybe not heavy armored or best equipped, but definitely capable of running down loose formations or acting as a great hammer to the anvil. Anything without a spear should fear these guys. Vanguards make a great jump from medium to heavy cavalry. Armed with a lance instead of a spear, unlike their predecessors, they're able to deliver a deadly head on charge without risking their lives as much. Levy crossbowmen are unskilled peasants armed with easy to use and deadly weapons capable of piercing some of the strongest armor. While wearing peasant rags, they're not very durable, but if kept safe, they can rain death on anyone. These men are slightly better than the levies, they come with better crossbows and armor. Though they peek into medium armor, it's all thanks to their helmets, so I'd still classify them as lightly armored unit. Be wary though, you don't want to expose these guys to enemy cavalry or ranged formations, even though they're the tier 3 unit. Hardened crossbowmen are combat veterans that served in long campaigns. They come with medium armor and the great Pavice shield. Maybe unable to use them like proper Pavice crossbowmen of war history, but at least it gives them an edge in melee combat when the worst comes to worst. Sharpshooters are the best of the best in the Vlandian army. Armed with crossbows that can one-hit those who forgot to wear armor, they come equipped with almost heavy and some with heavy armor. Once out of ammo in prolonged combat or if the enemy gets near enough to them, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe in the melee. Squires are armored as poorly as recruits, however they come equipped with a shield for extra durability and they're mounted to top it off. They're good at their job, however I would highly recommend to tear them up while fighting looters since their next tier comes with way better armor. Gallants are well equipped and their armor rating dumps high into the medium category. Their skill rating is a tad bit higher than their tier's average and I wouldn't think twice about sending them into an enemy infantry or ranged formation that forgot their pokey sticks. Knights are the first units in the Vlandian Noble Tree that qualify as elite. Since they're first to go over the 130 skill value, even though their two other skills aren't dropping his average below the 433, he still performs great on the battlefield due to his equipment and heavy armor. Champions come mounted on a Vlandian warhorse with heavy harnesses. They come with very heavy armor, allowing them to take more punishment than most. They also come with a shield and a great skill set. Combined with their lands, they can pave way for your infantry by charging into any formation. If you've seen my last video, you'll know that among tier 6 shock cavalry, Banner Knight may be armored poorly. However, with the longest couchable lands, they're one of the most durable glass cannons I've ever seen. Unless you face Pikemen on the battlefield with the best armor in the Vlandian army and skill rating of 8, he's a killing machine like no other. Now moving on to those that protect the Vlandian trade. Armed traders aren't the most skilled individuals, nor are they well equipped being tier 3. They're really worse than tier 2 levy crossbowmen, you can sometimes hire these men in taverns, but I would absolutely avoid it. Vlandian Caravan Master are a medium infantry unit that will just eat away at your money since they're a tier 5 unit, however without substantial armor or a shield. It makes him one of the most durable and expensive meat shields, similar to the Batanian Caravan Master. Caravan Guard are an elite shock cavalry that is essentially a better version of the light cavalry with better equipment and armor, except for the third loadout which has poorer inventory. With above their average skill rating and over 130 polearm skill which is something not many units can boast about except for the noble line units. In an odd turn of events, the veteran caravan guard loses their elite status due to poorer polearm skill but their other skills average out pretty nicely. All their loadouts have a similar armor rating and they come equipped with better weapons. Coming around to the protectors of land in society, villages and strongholds, we see a man with an obvious multiple personality disorder since even though he's a crossbowman, he likes to think of himself as an archer. I don't know if I trust this man to defend the walls of my city during a siege, but here we are. They're lightly armored and a shot or two from better ranged units can knock them off a wall easily. Their skill rating just under average, but for what they are, they should do their job just about okay. Veteran Militia Arch <coughs> Crossbowman is better armored and equipped compared to the regular, but in general he's still a lackluster unit. You should probably avoid these for your party since your regular crossbowmen are way better, especially at tier 4. Militia Spearman is just another unit of the unwashed masses and the only one that required 2 pages worth of items for their inventory. 
In general, for a tier 2 unit, they're pretty average, with light armor and poor equipment. Good for filling in the hole in your wall with their corpses. Coming around to the last unit of the Vlandin roster, we see a lightly armored tier 4 spearman. With a not so shabby weaponry, definitely isn't a keeper, but he's definitely useful to have around during a siege. Thanks for watching guys, hope you learned something new about Vlandian troops today. If you liked the video, slap the like button and vice versa if you didn't like it. Also you may have noticed that I added a shield hit point stat beside the armor rating since some have asked for it. And I didn't include it into the armor rating because your armor value decreases the amount of damage that you take once you are hit, while a shield prevents you from being hit, and it didn't just make sense for me to join them into one rating. Also, if you want to have this information easily available, there's spreadsheets down in the description below. Last thing I want to mention is that in general Vlandia are really missing some shoulder armor. Since older units are equipped with scarves or hoods, only worth 2 to 3 extra body armor and the only exception are sergeants, since they wear imperial capes providing them with 16 body armor and 4 arm armor. If there's something I would like to see added for this faction is definitely more shoulder pieces. Having said everything, have a good day guys and best of luck on the fields of Calradia.